In another video we revealed the ideal study path and the main subjects you should focus on to become a roboticist. However, there's an only suggestions and you can become a roboticist even without following all of them. Just to give you more insights, I'm gonna tell you what I did and studied so far to be surrounded every day by cool robots like Franca, Pepper, Tiago, Icap, another big human I'm coming soon, I can't tell the name, free exopods, drones, VR devices, 3D printing machines and so many other dope things. So I've always known since I was a kid that I wanted to do science, first wanted to become a crazy scientist, then thinking about becoming a surgeon, I don't know how, because I can't even spend a minute inside the hospital without freaking out, and also my dad and one sister of mine are daughters, so I'm good. And um, when finishing high school I knew I liked physics and math and science in general, and I decided to go for engineering because it's the one where you could get easily a good salary. First, thinking about energetic engineering, then I looked around to other possibilities and I found these electronics uh, that sounded cool, but no practical idea of what it consisted of. So at the end of my bachelor, I studied electronics engineering at Romatria University in Rome, Italy, my hometown. First year, you get some basics in calculus, linear algebra, physics, mechanics, chemistry that everyone used to hate, and some uh, fundamentals in coding. We had just an exam in Java. But it was general and I guess it's the first year is more or less of the same for every variety of engineering. Then second year, some good theoretical insights on electronics, signal theory and automation, but still zero practical knowledge. Third year, yes, I started to do some cool little projects and I found out about Duina and I said, oh gosh, I love this shit. Basically that year I've been always sick, always tired and weak with sore throat, I didn't know why. The reason was I had a bastard bacterial infection and only found out about that after several months so I was all, almost never going out and I was staying home uh, all the time playing with Arduino and studying for exams and even extra stuff studying, 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 studying and it's there that I got passionate about robots so I shall say those bacteria were not so bastard and there's a reason why I got them in the end so I started buying robotics books and um, I started to get into robotics, you know, and then one one day one friend of mine came at me and showed me this flyer about this master program in another university in Rome and he was so enthusiastic about it because he had also visited the lab and I said, wow, I didn't know there were like some robotics school you could go, well, that's amazing, like robots, whoa, I want to do that, I'm going to go for it. And that's what uh, what happened. I went for it. So I finished my bachelor. Then the master was in English. So my English was so bad. So bad. So I went for a month in Dublin. I picked up my English. Uh, at least I could communicate, you know. And I started this master of science. And I was expecting that we were supposed to do some practical stuff, you know, with the robots. But the first year was tough, like only theory and said, gosh, there are still so many things to learn. What are the robots? I want to just do amazing things with the robots. And still, yeah, you realize that it's pretty complicated, you know. So the year after, I decided to go with the Erasmus program in Germ to Germany, uh, in Dortmund. And... Um, yeah, I, I didn't want to spend, I was living in Rome with my parents, I didn't want to live with my parents anymore, so I said, okay, I'm just gonna go abroad. I went to Dortmund, TU Dortmund, such a great university, and you also do some tutorials um, from practical stuff. I mean, by the way, also in the second year in the University of Rome, you do some projects, but just wanting to stay abroad. So I spent a good time there, but you know, I met so many international students and I was having so much fun. I said, man, like robotics is so complex. It's all these analyses. Are you sure you're gonna, you wanna do that for the rest of your life? Like spending your life figuring out how making robot work, like programming and coding every day in front of a laptop without socializing, I'd rather do a job where I where I can socialize with people, having fun, you know. And so I started to prepare my plan B, plan C, like so many alternative plans. But the main plan was to go to Australia and open a pasta fast food restaurant. So I said, okay, I'm gonna just get this master 
And then I just gonna go for this post office food restaurant. I decided to study so many things about food trucks and uh, fast foods, watching documentaries. Oh my gosh, I read so many things. I quite become an I become an expert of <laughs> food truck <laughs> of the food truck business. So yeah, then I came back in Italy and I finished the last semester in Rome. And I said, no man, I can't stay in Rome anymore at all. I, this city is not for me. I just no, 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 no. So I said, okay, I'm gonna look for an um, internship to to do my thesis project. And so I got this internship at Iria in Nancy, where I work now. And uh, yeah, I got this internship. But during the internship, uh, I was doing a lame project. I mean, the project itself, the idea of the project was cool, but the framework I had to work with it was such a mess. So. Wow, still, man, like I was, oh, still, yeah, it's so complicated. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna go for the pasta fast food restaurant. Then I don't know, I changed plan. I don't even remember. I was supposed to go to port to start in Portugal. So I was preparing anything, everything, you know. And then at the end of my internship, my boss comes to me and he says, okay, what did you do? I say, yeah, I did this and this. Can we do the experiment with the robot? It's working. She says, wow, it's working. Oh, cool. Why don't you stay? We're looking for an engineer to work on the um, on this project, but like to advance this project and with another framework. And uh, why don't you stay? Like you made things work. So it would be cool if you stay. I said, no, 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 I have my plan. I gotta go to Portugal and open this pasta fast food restaurant. And she said, like, well, you can save money for a year and you can start your plans uh, in an easier way, you know, like with some money aside. So, yeah, it sounds like a cool plan. So I stayed one year as an engineer. And uh, when I was an engineer, I got more confident, you know, and... uh, I started noticing, yeah, there's pretty, some pretty cool stuff you can do with these robots. And at the end, it's not so all about analysis. There's also a lot of creativity in here, you know. And then I went to conferences and you meet so many people. It's cool. And, and But I went to a conference. I published the paper, but my boss told me, like, okay, you can publish papers as an engineer, but... It's not what you're supposed to do, you know, you're like, you're more supposed to provide technical um, support to the team. That's more a researcher thing, like publishing, doing new things. And uh, so, yeah, it's actually better. And, uh, but still, I wanted to be an engineer because the salary is higher. So the at the end of my year, um, contract um, as an engineer, we were about to renew my contract but then, um, in the last moment, like, I guess that day I was supposed to sign the contract. And my boss says, comes at me and says, hey, hey we have a, we have a, um, we have a, posi- a PhD position is open. Like, why don't you apply for it? I said, no, but I want to be an engineer. He said, no, but the PhD the engineer, I don't know, maybe you stay just for a year. Like, the PhD is going to be for three years. And I said, yeah, but my salary is going to decrease, you know. She said, yeah, it's going to decrease, but it's a big investment for your future, you know. Like, being a doctor in robotics is cool. Um, and also, you can do whatever you want. I said, yeah, okay, under these conditions, if I can do whatever I want, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna accept. So here I am starting my PhD, and I realized um, every day I realized that robotics. I'm really thankful to robotics because it really allows me to express my creativity, my personality. So I would say robotics was wasn't my passion at first. I like surfing and socializing with people, but. Also, for me, it's very important to be creative and express my creativity. And through robotics, I can do that. So I'm really grateful to robotics, to robots. And the more you go, the more you get confident, the more you get results easier. Now, in a couple of months, if I have a crazy idea, okay, let's do this. In a couple of months, I can see some results, you know, and then, okay, to finish the work, it takes time. But at least I can see some results. Uh, it's, It's crazy, man. It's so cool. So that's my story, guys. And uh, I hope you could take some inspiration from that. Uh, the lesson I learned is 
it takes patience you know at first you're not confident you don't have the all the knowledge and you never have all the knowledge to do things in a perfect way but you just need to get confident enough to be productive you know to produce some results and uh, takes patience and you don't have to be scared you take your time and learn simple things just a little thing every day and then you get where you want to be okay see you next time i hope you guys liked it if so hit the like button subscribe ring that bell so to know when more videos like this are out it helps us out so much i'll see you there